This is your LA in a Minute. Today we want to talk about the history of... When a Los Angeles dad noticed his son immersed in TikTok videos, he made the decision to elevate his child's social media feed by posting educational videos about L.A. It's kind of like sneaking veggies into your kids' smoothies. Evan Lovett's L.A. in a Minute TikTok videos have gone viral. It turns out the social media world of all ages enjoys its share of L.A. trivia. I want to tell you five things you need to know about Ventura Boulevard. Let's get into it. Fact number one, I'm here at the corner of Ventura Boulevard and Balboa at Los Encinos State Historic Park in front of what looks like a man-made water feature. However, this was a natural spring that provided water year round for the native Tongvin village of Siut Conga, which existed for 10,000 years and was the first inhabited land in the San Fernando Valley. Fact number two, in 1769, Spanish explorers from the Portola expedition rediscovered Siat Conga, colonized it, and made what would become Ventura Boulevard part of the El Camino Real, which connected the mission system in Alta, California. Fact number three, I'm here at the intersection of Ventura and Sepulveda, not because it's the most busy intersection in the San Fernando Valley, but because it marks roughly the halfway point between Studio City and Calabasas, an 18-mile stretch of businesses along Ventura Boulevard, which makes it the longest such stretch in the world. Fact number four, in 1928, famed producer Max Sennett built Max Sennett Studios right here along the LA River at Radford and Ventura Boulevard, which became one of the most important production houses in all of Los Angeles and is the reason why this area is today known as Studio City. Fact number five, I'm here in front of the Havenhurst compound, formerly owned by Michael Jackson, which is just steps away from Ventura Boulevard, which is what inspired his groundbreaking music video, Billy Jean. Evan, great to have you. If anybody knows the Valley, it's you. Uh, grew up there. Tell us about the evolution of your little TikTok show. What I started doing was doing a kind of L.A. in a minute where I would take the actual L.A. Times, paraphrase two or three stories every day. This area is under more video surveillance than any city in the Western Hemisphere. You know, many people need to be informed. They want their L.A. news quickly. And TikTok algorithms sort of did the rest and, and catapulted me into uh, people's feeds. What is up? This is your L.A. in a minute. And this is a really cool episode on the sunken city in San Pedro. You started doing little trivia posts from landmarks around the city, just trying to get everyone to share and feel the love that you have for the Southland. But the first video that actually went viral was about L.A.'s fast food. This is your L.A. in a Minute, and today I want to talk about the oldest fast food chains that originated in Los Angeles, so let's get to it. I always read about Los Angeles, and at the time, George Geary was one of my favorite authors. He has a book called Made in California about the various uh, fast food and restaurants that started in California. What I just did was kind of boil down the top 10 oldest fast food chains that come from Los Angeles um, and put that into a video. Number four, we flash back to 1945 where Burt Baskin and Irv Robbins had competing ice cream stores in Burbank and Pasadena and eventually merged them into Baskin Robbins. Yeah, you ran with it, literally. And by the way, it's personal, Pioneer Chicken. My dad was a fried chicken guy. So it was a special thing for us to go to Pioneer Chicken, not necessarily every week, but fairly often. And I remembered as a kid, Pioneer Chicken used to be all over the place, it used to be bigger than KFC. And then all of a sudden they were gone. And one day I found out, I'm like, wait, Pioneer Chicken still exists? Turns out there are two left, including one in Boyle Heights. So I had to go investigate. So even though Pioneer Chicken is not everywhere like they once used to be, you could still come to Bell Gardens or Boyle Heights and still enjoy the crunch herd around the world. Every Southern California kid and adult has enjoyed a fat burger or two. Absolutely. Now, Fat Burger is one of my favorite stories because specifically Fat Burger's history, it was started by an African-American female, Lovey Yancey. And this is in the 1940s where, um, you know, prior to full integration, here was an African-American female who started a business, an entrepreneur. And not only was it successful, but it ended up being almost a billion dollar business. And just the history of how Fat Burger evolved was so intriguing. And it's so entrenched in the lifeblood of Los Angeles. The original stand on Western was designated as an L.A. historical cultural monument. So when that property sold, it had to be incorporated into the new development. 
The iconic Bob from Bob's Big Boy, it's history. Now, I'm here at the oldest Bob's continually in existence, built in 1949. This one now, Bob's Big Boy is another great one because the founder was actually voted most likely to not succeed at Glendale High School. <laughs> and he used that as motivation to save money to purchase a hamburger stand that ended up becoming Bob's Hamburgers. One night, a group of musicians came in asking for something more than just a burger. And as a joke, he cut a sesame bun in thirds instead of half, placed meat on both pieces of bread with the cheese, and it was the first double burger in existence. Bob's Big Boy was sort of the model that fast food restaurants used from that point forward and spearheaded the whole Los Angeles fast food movement. Tell us what's next for this vlog, because it's the fastest growing social media show right now. I like to focus on infrastructure. How does LA get its water? So the five-year construction of this pipeline and this whole project was completed in 1913. What do we do with all that trash? The facilities claim to divert 65% of the trash, either for recycling, upcycling, or converting waste into energy. Up next, something coming soon is a long form where I'm going to get into the water wars and the history of William Mulholland, who's probably the most important person in Los Angeles because he's responsible for the water and thus the inception of the metropolis that's known as Los Angeles. That kid you started making those videos for in the first place, does he still tune in to Dad's show? Recently, he's been back into it, and I did an episode recently on Richie Valens. Come on, baby, just rock, rock, rock who is one of the uh, pioneers of the Chicano rock movement. Richie Valens next record, Donna, with the B-side La Bamba, sold more than a million copies and was certified gold. My son Felix was very uh, intrigued by that episode and has continued to watch. Evan Lovett, LA in a Minute, continued success. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. This is a great time. I really appreciate it.